Hey everyone, my name is Stacy Reed and I am so thrilled to be presenting on the topic of relationships and anxiety and how to create a space where anxiety is inevitable at certain times that we're able to maneuver and um, thrive in relationships as it relates to anxiety. Um, so welcome first and foremost to the Anti-Anxiety Summit and um, let's get started. So what you can expect is you can expect um, a miracle formula, a magic formula, if you will, um, to basically not only anxiety and relationships, but really to life. Um, make sure to download my free my freebie on that. So it's creating 10 out of 10 um, relationships everywhere in your life. Um, and that includes a 10 out of 10 relationship with anxiety. And that's what we'll go over today. So um, let's dive in to that magic formula, because once you download that uh, freebie, this will really be a nice enhancement to it. So first and foremost is step one um, in the magic formula is you can't fail. So Oftentimes, we don't go all the way into a relationship or um, really we don't take the steps necessary to alleviate the pain and suffering that we're having in a relationship such as anxiety because we feel like we're going to fail. We feel like we're not enough. We feel like maybe we'll be judged or um, look bad in any capacity. So the first step is to take failure off the table. And Sure, you might be saying, well, Stacy, that's easier said than done. However, what I'm suggesting is it's a choice. So choose to remove failure as an option. So what that looks like is, let's say you're, you're in a relationship. I'll use myself as an example. So I currently have a two-month-old and um, my partner is a brilliant coach and his business is booming. And so his hours have um, extended. And, you know, what can cause anxiety in a relationship more than anything is a new baby, right, is a new person. And um, so I have a choice every day, whether I'm going to choose to create a story where um, anxiety potentially could exist in our relationship, and with the baby, and what I want to do with that. And so I'm using myself as an example because there's so many other people that have obstacles like let's say somebody doesn't um, is not working in your relationship and you're carrying the load or let's come up with some other ideas like um, what other other areas of um, anxiety and relationships? Kids are big, finances are big, um, not agreeing on religion is big. Um, not um, agreeing on vaccinations, medical stuff can cause a lot of anxiety. And what I'm proposing is no matter what you choose in your relationship, when your relationship with anxiety or your relationship with your partner or sister or anywhere is it's a choice and you can choose to create a space where it works or create a space where it doesn't work. And so what doesn't work in my circumstance is making my partner um, less than or, um, or I'm a victim to my circumstance with the baby, right? Um, because he gets to work and I don't or whatever the story may be. And I'll use, so here's a prime example that happened actually last night. So my 15 year old has um, just gotten his learner's permit so he can drive with an adult. And I have the two month old and my partner got off work at 7 p.m. He had worked all day um, coaching and all he wanted to do was eat dinner and watch his favorite show and just, you know, relax his mind. Well, that's all I want to do, you know, because I've been with the baby and I'm coaching and I have the kids and all this stuff. And so um, I could have chosen because I was feeling anxious, like I want to create this video for you all. Um, there's so many things I want to do and oh, the anxiety, the anxiety. Right. So when that creeps up, I one implement, I can't fail. Right. The second part of that is that everything is neutral. So I get to choose from what works and what doesn't work. And so what doesn't work is blame, fault, shame, and guilt. It just simply, it will never work in a relationship. And it will, it will enhance anxiety. 
This I know for sure. And so my 15 year old wanted to go on a drive um, and he wanted to get some night driving in. So he has to get 10 hours of night driving in and it doesn't get dark till 8 p.m. Well, I give the baby a bath. Um, my partner's downstairs watching his show. I can feel the anxiety come because I'm thinking, oh, there's a lot on my plate. I hope the baby sleeps. You know, my partner's not showing up for me. All of these things are coming up, very natural things. And I just committed. I committed to being unattached to where we drove to in the vehicle, how long we were driving, whether the baby was perfect in my eyes or not, whether my partner, you know, like acknowledged my showing up and, all, you know, how great of a mom I am, all of the things. And I just went on the drive. And when I went on the drive, it was amazing because we, we were out for 20 minutes and we saw houses being built that I hadn't seen before and roads that we hadn't driven on before and we had a blast and we connected and there was a lot of intimacy and vulnerability and my little one slept in the back seat and I thought to myself, there's no place in the world I'd rather be than right here right now and it's perfect where my partner is. Like everything is perfect the way it is. And that was an absolute choice and all of my anxiety left and I just simply looked at what would work and what didn't work so that's number two number one can't fail number two um, everything is neutral and number three is there's always room to negotiate and so when I say negotiate I mean I mean negotiate there is always room to negotiate this isn't like a wheel or deal situation um, where you know like you can negotiate price which you can but it's a matter of I negotiate with my spirit guides I negotiate with um, my partner, I negotiate with myself. I call it my little person inside, AKA my ego. I negotiate with my kid. And so the negotiation piece really started with anxiety and me with what am I going to choose? And so, you know, oftentimes anxiety is a price that we pay for our choices. And so that leads me into responsibility for me, I am 100% responsible for everything in my life as I'm, I'm offering that and um, inviting you to be as well. So what does that being responsible look like? Um, it, it means if I choose, if I choose anxiety, then over, like, for instance, my situation, if I chose anxiety over connection with my children, and loving my partner, then I'm responsible for that. Now you might be thinking, yeah, yeah, but your situation's different than mine. I have, I have, um, you know, I have anxiety because of trauma in the past, or I have anxiety because this or, this or that. I can tell you from my own experience that I too have childhood trauma, um, substantial. Um, I have battled with addictions in the past. I have. Um, all of the same life struggles um, in different variations than everybody else has. And so what I can promise you is if you follow this magic formula, 100% of the time, the results will be there. Um, the, the key to it is to not attach to what that looks like. So it might be where I want, I let's say I wanted to I wanted to drive anxiety free with my kids and I wanted my partner to greet me with a warm hug the minute I got in and I only wanted to be gone for 10 minutes, right? So I would, I would, because I'm so attached to those results, I would be creating a space of anxiety. But because I was unattached, I ended up free as a bird. So that's a, that's a really great example of, of choices initially. So where else can we go with, with anxiety and relationships? One thing I want to say, and you might not all like me, but hey, I'm willing to pay the price of nobody liking me um, in order to land this point. Everyone here is the uncontested author of their lives, including me. And I want to let everyone know that you are the cause of your anxiety. Now, if there is a medical um, condition or, um, let's say, um, trauma, um, you know, brain trauma or something clinical. Um, this does not, this does not hold to that. But if, if you're just in a space now, 
let's say you recently divorced or um, you know, you're, you're working more or there's a big life change that has happened. You know, COVID um, has shifted a lot of things and now all of a sudden you have more anxiety than ever. That's, that's the type of situ situation that I'm saying you're responsible for your anxiety um, because it truly is a choice. I, I like to say, and I've heard this, I don't know who I heard it from, but I heard don't sell out on your wildest dreams for cheap emotions. So, you know, anxiety can be a cheap emotion and at times. And so if, you, if I'm the uncontested author of my life and so are you, that means you can create any story you want with anxiety. I might sound crazy, just follow me with this. So overwhelm is also um, accompanied with anxiety. Um, let's see, so is, um, let's see, overwhelm, anxiety, uh, pressure. Pressure is a big one. Pressure was a big one for me. So I, I asked myself, and I'll ask you, the last time you really felt anxious, where was it at in your body? For me, it's like this, it starts in my chest and it, it almost feels like somebody's sitting on my chest when anxiety comes and when pressure comes. And now, before, when I would feel that in my body and, and notice when you feel it in your body, that is actually your intuition. Your intuition saying, wait, 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 right? And normally when I would feel it, I would, you know, it's fight or flight. Sometimes I'd fight, sometimes I'd flight. Um, it didn't go well. And so I wanted to create a space that it would start working for me. So when I feel that feeling now, it's like this pressure in my chest, I pause. I pause and I notice, wait, I'm up to big things. When I feel pressure, when I feel a, a tinge of anxiety, um, when I feel some overwhelm, that is my signal that I'm up to big things. I check in, oh yes, that's right. So for instance, creating this video, <sighs> I battled like three different days, um, one, be, you know, being on time, um, 30, it being 30 minutes, um, all the pressure that I started to create on myself. Right. And so, um, having the baby, should I, you know, do I even have time to put makeup on? Um, these are some of the stories that, that I came, like was starting to come up with. Um, will they like me? Will they, they know that I'm a great coach and I, I'm professional, um, oh my gosh, all the fears started rushing in. And I had an opportunity uh, before I created this space to one, know that I can't fail. I just can't fail. My, my intention is to serve others with joy. And my mission is to help everyone dispel those expired beliefs that they have about themselves, including anxiety with relationships. And so the next step is, is what works is when I'm authentic. And what works is when you all are authentic, authentic with yourself and, and know that, that you can create this space, right? And then I got to negotiate, I actually negotiated with the host of this summit, Julie, and said, hey, um, you know, it looks like um, the space that I created um, is running out to um, submit my my 30 minute video, are you cool if I extend that a little bit? She's like, great, right? So negotiation, that that took off the pressure, that took away the anxiety. And now I was just like, when a space opens up, I'm, I'm jumping in, I'm jumping in. And so here I am. And so what I really want to land with everyone here, what I really want you to take away um, is that formula, is the three-step formula. And I would love an opportunity to support you in that. Um, all of my information is here and um, you can always reach out to me. And I do have a link that you can book um, a quick 30 minute call to really dive into what's underneath the anxiety because there's always something underneath. So back to, I'm so excited to, to be with you all, back to uh, where I started when I feel it, now my story is, is that I'm up to big things. And so as um, the days are going by and I know I get to create this video um, and negotiate with my partner and with Julie is I'm up to big things. I, I am living my vision. So oftentimes I find that anxiety 
especially in relationships, revolves around not being connected to your vision. What is your vision for your relationship? I'm currently working with a couple and have been that um, their vision is to create a transparent relationship based on love and respect and, um, you know, just fun and joy. And so grounding in that gets them through obstacles of do they circumcise or not circumcise their child? Do they vaccinate or non-vaccinate? Um, there's so many obstacles that this couple has went through and by grounding in their vision has dispelled that anxiety that was, that was once completely crippling to their relationship and their happiness. And so what I wanna say to all of you is it's possible. 100% is possible 100% of the time. It really is. I hope that you've landed here um, and that this resonates with you and that you, you leave feeling some relief, knowing that there's some guidelines that you can follow and you don't have to follow them perfectly. You get to it detach from the results. So last but not least, and I know I haven't hit that full um, 30 minutes. That leads me to my next um, um, quick little topic is one of my claim to fames is time bending. And I got an opportunity to talk with Julie about that. And it just goes to show that time essentially doesn't exist when we are focused on our vision and we can make anything happen, including our perfect dream relationship with anxiety. So my invitation to you is check from a scale from one to 10, one being the lowest, 10 being amazing. Where is your relationship with anxiety right now? Do you dread things? Um, does it cripple you? Do you have anxiety attacks, um, especially as it relates to your relationships? Um, does the thought of your partner coming home make you cringe? Um, there's all kinds of different levels of anxiety with relationships. And if you're a two out of 10 with, with anxiety, I invite you to see what's in the gap to get you, let's say, to a six, because we can't get what we don't transmit. And if all I have is a two to transmit, I will have two anxiety issues, which is no fun at all, right? But if I have a 10 out of 10 relationship with anxiety, meaning when it crops up, I lean in, I know I'm up to big things, I push forward, um, you know, I give myself grace. I don't have any of the same issues and I'm not attracting any of the same issues that I was before. I loaded this video full of content and um, my hope is that if you felt any kind of overwhelm um, that it, or anxiety that it triggers you into reaching out, reach out to me, reach out to any of the other coaches, just reach out, pick up the thousand pound phone um, or text or however you want to communicate and just know that there's hope that um, this too shall pass and I'm actually proof. So thanks again. And I look forward to, to hearing from you and talking to you.